Cheryl, just so much context that is missed or ignored, but so important, so important. Um, okay, let's. Okay, I'm gonna. Let's start the clock. Uh, Plutonic forces, Afghanistan as satellite state of the Soviet Union and as a proxy war for the U.S., then ruled by uh, Islamists, then ruled by U.S. secured government in Kabul and tribes and Islamists uh, everywhere else after 20 years of Western intervention back in the Yeah, so check this out. Okay, let's go to Afghanistan. Okay, to understand Afghanistan, you got to understand Brzezinski. And whoever controls Eurasia controls the world, right? Now, Unical Pipeline you got major resources here as much not not as much but major resources there a lot of the resources that are available in africa are also available here it's just major conflict zones right so in the 1970s there was more of a communist uh ussr backed government in afghanistan okay and what happened was the united states started funding the the opposition party in afghanistan and there was a coup attempt in large part in afghanistan okay now what basically happened was the ussr started supporting the afghan regime there and it was a regime okay there and they started the united states started basically in large part the western world really started to basically poke a stick in a hornet's nest right because who they were supporting here in the late 1970s and all the way in, into the 80s were the islamists the fanatics al-qaeda if you want to call it al-qaeda was a cia drive war right al-qaeda means base right so basically it was wahhabi sect that had gone from Saudi Arabia, planted their bases, okay, in Afghanistan, set up schools. Schools are ridiculously important, people. Ridiculously important, right? This is how it all begins. That's why the globalists are taking control of our education system, right? That's why we should not be sending our kids to our centralized indoctrination centers. So the Wahhabi sects, that's one thing Saudi Arabia exports a lot of, not just oil, but the Wahhabism, right? The fanaticism. They have schools in all over Africa. One of the first places they started was Afghanistan, right? So they set up their bases there, start training a lot of Islamists. They have mosques, they have schools. United States tag teams with them, starts giving them fucking weapons, right? During the Russian occupation of Afghanistan, right? Russia, it becomes a black hole. Right. Russia loses a lot of people there, loses a lot of military hardware, and it's not going well for them. It's draining USSR's resources, and there's all this other stuff going on, and we're on the verge of the collapse of the Soviet bloc, Soviet Union, right? And this, basically, Afghanistan is the last place empires go to die, right? And USSR went in there, a lot of pressure, they ended up pulling out the government. Now, this is the difference between the USSR, what USSR was doing here, and what the United States did here, right? When USSR pulled out of Afghanistan, they didn't pull out overnight, like the way the Bidens. U United States was in here 20 fucking years, right? USSR was in Afghanistan, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Cheryl, seven years, eight years, five years, six years, somewhere around there, less than 10 years. U USSR was in Afghanistan, right? United States was in Afghanistan 20 years. United States had to pull out overnight, leaving hardware, leaving bases, getting the F out, leaving a lot of their collaborators there to die under the, under the hands of the Taliban, purging going on galore, right? That's how United States left. When the USSR left, nine years, thank you, Joe. U USSR was in Afghanistan nine years, right? When they left, it was organized. They pulled all their hardware out, bases closed down, and the government that they left there was still in power for a number of months, right? So, Joe, uh, USSR was there from December 24th, 1979 to February 15th, 1989. So, 10 years, let's say, 10 years, right? 
oh, nine, nine years, nine years and a couple of months, right? Okay, so they left the government there that was stable for at least a few months, right? And then the Islamists took it over. There was a coup, and we got the beginning of Al Qaeda, right? We got the beginning of the Islamists, uh, the Mujahideen, right? The Mujahideen, the yeah, the Mujahideen, right? The the ones that flew over to Washington, right? All those, the birth of ISIS and stuff like that. They flew over to Washington, met met with Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. Ronald Reagan compared them to the to the founding fathers of the United States of America, right? You follow this? This is how close Mujahideen, Al Qaeda, ISIS, and how long their relationship has been together started in Afghanistan, and the United States government called them, compared them to the founding fathers of the United States of America. Okay. This is 1980s, right? 19, end of 1980s, USSR collapses. They make a deal. USSR, Gorbachev make a deal with the United States, right? Saying, okay, we're not going to militarily occupy any of the Eastern Bloc countries. We're going to pull out. You make a promise that NATO does not move one inch to the east. Doesn't move one inch to the east. Thank you very much for the follow, Rosa appreciate it okay so nato or united states promises russia that nato is not going to move one inch to the east okay this is late eight late 80s and ussr pulls you russia pulls out ussr block collapses warsaw pact is gone right which is the main reason that nato existed right north atlantic treaty organization existed to challenge the warsaw pact right so russia ussr collapses russia economically just fucking plummets right plummets right bush senior gets into power uh and this is at the same time this needs to be cleared up as well right at the same time there's Iraq-Iran war happening. One of the most devastating wars in history. One of the most brutal wars in history. One of the most infuriating wars in history. One of the reasons was Europe and the United States, the Western powers, were supplying Saddam Hussein with all the military hardware, with all the information, satellites, including chemicals, chemical weapons that Iraq was using on Iranians right iranians right in the 1980s all right iraq ended up losing that war in large you could say it was a draw but iraq after that war economically was fucking devastated iran after the iran we could get in seriously we could talk about that for a long time i'm skipping over a lot of shit right iran after that war was fucking solidified solid the morale in Iran was United States, Western governments using Iraq with high-tech U.S. Western weaponry, using chemical weapons that Iraq denied using, Western governments denied that Iraq was using, and everybody knew that they were using, right? Everybody knew that Iraq was using chemical weapons. Iran, after that war, the Iranian population was like this, solid. Now, at the same time, there was purges going on in Iraq where they were getting rid of communists and stuff like this. That was after the Iranian revolution in 1978-79, right? So this war is crucial. Iraq economic turmoil, right? Economic turmoil. Saddam Hussein needed a diversion. At the same time, oil prices were plummeted, right? Kuwait was doing slant oil drilling into Iraq, Iraqi reserves and dumping oil onto the markets, suppressing oil prices, right? Suppressing oil prices, okay? Going against what OPEC was saying. Okay. Iraq told the Kuwaiti installed puppets there, stop doing this because Iraq needs money to build back its economy. 
right? Because they just spent a shitload of money. Where did they spend it? They buy weapons from the United States and Western countries. So Iraq took all their oil profits, all the oil money, and they bought weapons from the Western governments, right? We're war-based economies. Western world is a war-based economy, especially the United States of America, right? And they needed oil prices to be fairly high for them to be able to stabilize the country again. Kuwait was going against that. Iraq met up with the Americans because Iraq, Saddam Hussein, was a CIA-installed puppet. They put him in power in 1960 with a coup, right? And Iraq dropped a hint that they might go into Kuwait to prevent them from flooding the market with oil. United States said, do whatever you want. Iraq took that as the green light for them to go into Kuwait. They went into Kuwait, oh, the shit at the fan. United States, Europe, oh, Iraq is invading Kuwait, blah, 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 blah. Right? We make a coalition of the willing at the time. No, a coalition of the willing they called in the, the second Gulf War. But basically, under George Bush, right, they started the first Iraq War. Absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. The propaganda in that war was insane, right? Incubator babies. Just look that up and you'll see how ridiculous it was, right? By the way, gang, uh, uh, here, here in my country, we only heard in the media that Saddam Hussein is an evil dictator who, without any reason, attacked. Yeah, that's what they say. And without any support. He was an evil dictator, Saddam Hussein. Indeed, he was. Whose puppet was he? He was Western puppet. He was Western trained, Western installed puppet. So the puppet, was the puppet the true evil of what was happening? Or the people controlling the strings of the puppet? Right? We, yeah, we have to consider that, right? That was a guard. By the way, when the first Gulf War happened, okay, the people that felt them seriously, in the world, the people who felt, aside from Iraqis, the people who felt the most amount of pain for Iraqis were Iranians because they knew exactly what was going on. I talked with Iranians. Even though for eight years there was an Iraq-Iran war happening, that Iraqis, Saddam Hussein, used chemical weapons on Iranians, killed Iranians. This region here, south of Iraq, they have the same religion as Iranians. They're the same people. The people in Iraq that were fighting Iranians during the 1980s, right? They didn't want to fight Iran. They were forced to fight Iran. They had no choice in it. They were cannon fodder, right? Very much the same shit that's happening in Ukraine right now, by the way, okay? With the Ukrainian regime grabbing people off the streets and sending them to the front lines. Cannon fodder, right? So Iranians... I'm talking Iranians in Canada I was talking to, right? We all, because I, I, I was born, not, I was born there. I lived there. I lived very close to the Iraq-Iran border, right, when I was a kid. No one wanted to see that many Iraqis die and that to happen to them. No one. No Iranian. Meanwhile, the Western world was cheering the shit on, right? That's the level of empathy that the, the, the difference you see in the world from one part of the world to another part of the world. Okay. Unbelievable. So Iraq war happens. What happens? The United States, the coalition of willing or the Western allies set up a military base in the holiest site the holiest country land for a certain segment of the Muslim world. The people in Afghanistan freak the fuck out, the Wahhabi sects, right? Because why the fuck are Western military setting up military, Western government setting up a military base in Saudi Arabia to wage war on Muslims, right? So they go in there, they fucking chill. Look, look, look at the highway of death. Okay, look at the highway. Of, if you if you want to know what the first Gulf War was about, two things you need to look up. Incu incubator babies and look up the highway of death. Okay. And then 
compare it to what Russia's doing in Ukraine. Okay. And that should reveal to you, enlighten you as to what really is going on and how much propaganda the Western world is uh, under, right? And how brainwashed most people are in the Western world, right? So United States and the rest of the allies go in there and they don't remove Saddam Hussein because they realize they can't occupy the whole country, right? They have hundreds of thousands of troops here, by the way, in Saudi Arabia and shit like this. They go in there, liberate Kuwait. How do they liberate Kuwait? They tell the Kuwaiti royalty that, hell, we'll put you back in power, but most of your wealth is not ours. Kuwaitis, the royalty there, they go, well, fuck, we got nothing right now. Might as well give, give whatever we got to the Western powers to stay, to get our little piece of chunk of control back, right? And for 10 years, right? So Iraq war number one, 1991, during the Clinton administration, you see balkanization here, Yugoslavia breaks down, NATO fucking wages war in Europe again with Yugoslavia, destroying Yugoslavia, fucking the propaganda coming on the war they needed to wage and Serbia was unbelievable. You know, NATO bombs, uh, Chinese television stations in Serbia and Yugoslavia because they don't need crazy shit going on. So since the collapse of the USSR in the late 1980s, what basically happened was when Russia collapsed economically and during that time in the 1990s, Russia like literally economically completely collapsed, annihilated, right? I've mentioned this before. People were selling their underwear in the streets because they needed to buy food. People in the Eastern Bloc countries under the USSR were cutting down telephone poles because they needed wood to heat their homes in the winter, right? They were burning everything and anything to heat themselves in the winter, right? Well, uh, Plutonic says, why was Serbia targeted? Yugoslavia was targeted because it was the balkanization of the region to on their way to wage war on Russia, right? They need to divide everyone, break people up into dif different ethnic groups. That way they can control them. Same kind of shit they did in Africa, right? So it was basically NATO wanting to move east, even though they promised USSR they wouldn't move east, right? So in the 1990s, Russia had completely collapsed. Uh, it, it was a joke. You had people from United States from Washington, uh, from New York. I know this because I, we had family member that used to travel to Russia a lot, right? And he said one time, it was in uh, Los Angeles at the time, and he told a story where he was at the Moscow airport and a private jet landed in a Moscow airport. And this guy was a merchant, right? This guy was a merchant and he knew his shit. He traveled all around the world, did a lot of dealings and stuff like this. He said he was, he was in the Moscow airport and a private jet landed on the tarmac and a whole shitload of Anaskazi uh, Jews, the, the ones with the hair like this, got out of the plane, right? And they went into Moscow. He knows this because they had a lot of connections. What they ended up doing was they went to the Moscow Museum, they walked around and they said they want that piece, that piece, that piece, that piece, that piece. So Russia was being looted, like literally looted, just the way any empire goes into any country and loots artifacts from that region. For example, a lot of countries in Africa and the Middle East have disputes with London right now, museums in London wanting their artifacts back, right? So in the 1990s, a lot of people from the Western world were going into, Mos uh, into Russia and looting the nation, right? So not only just art, like priceless art, they were, they were paying like a chump change, like a few thousand dollars to buy this priceless piece of painting or any type of art that would be worth millions in the Western world if they could get it out, right? Crazy. They were also doing this to companies like oil companies, mining companies, industrial companies, factories, right? They destroyed the economy. Factories were closing down bare bones. They were going in there and buying these factories and the rights for regions to extract resources just the way we talked about sierra leone that the mining company in canada and uk then the last stream that we did they were getting all these resources for chunk chain pennies on the dollar that gave rise to russian oligarchs 
So Russia in the 1990s turned into a complete oligarchy with the general population impoverished. Alcoholism through the roof, drug addiction through the roof. Remember, Afghanistan produces 80, 90 percent of the world's opium. Heroin flooding into Russia, flooding into Russia, right? Annihilated. Okay. At the end of the 1990s, 2000, who comes into play? Putin. Putin comes into play. Right? I'm just going to read a couple of uh, things. A divide and conquer. I'm just going to really scan this really quick. Uh, da, 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 just see if I missed anything important. Cheryl, even though I have a hard time not referring to the region as Yugoslavia, it's weird to hear someone else say it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 99, Russia wasn't ready to fence her. No, in 1999, Russia couldn't do anything. Russia was co completely collapsed. Military was in shambles. Economy was in shambles. Food stocks were in shambles. Could, uh, industry was was completely destroyed. It was It was very difficult to even extract oil resources out of there. Right, but it created the oligarchs. Right, what happens at the end of that in 2000? Putin comes into play. Putin comes in and he's a nationalist, he believes in Russian identity. Right, and he builds back the country. How long does it take him to build back the country? Well, you could say it took Putin, okay, and the people that really gave a shit about Russia 20 years to build back Russia because when Putin comes into power since the beginning of the century and this is where we began cheryl since you kicked us back into the 1970s right and i glossed over a shitload of stuff right in 2000 right at the beginning of two in 2000 basically 2000 2001 putin comes into play no one knows who he is but he's a russian he believes in the russian identity right in 2001 we get 9 11. in 2001 we get western governments going into afghanistan and patriot act being past patriot act to me was the trigger that really laid out everything else that we are right now right they go into afghanistan dumbest fucking move the western governments have ever made afghanistan is the empire killer right it's the empire killer they go in there in 2001 they go into afghanistan they occupy afghanistan they put their own puppet in power the person they put into power was working for unicalf with pipelines going up here they want to build the pipelines build a connection they thought they had it all all the resources and afghanistan is a shitload of resources lithium i've heard a lot of it right and other things right and you got Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, uh, Kazakhstan, and all this jazz, right? I know these places have resources because when I was doing geophysics in the 1990s, we had one of our geophysics members doing geophysics work here for the resources, right? Okay. Now, they get into Afghanistan. They think they got it all sorted out. Bush Jr., little puppet, dick cheney calling the shots okay afghanistan was a prize they got right or they thought they got but they also weren't done in iraq they want iraq as well right so bush jr in 2003 they build up the case yellow cake and shit coming out of sudan by they put colin powell the u.n flipping his said anybody that knew anything knew that iraq was not building weapons of mass destruction one of the reasons you knew this because if you were following scott ritter scott ritter was a weapons inspector because in the 1990s i glossed over this in the 1990s 10 years of sanctions 12 years of sanctions on iraq devastated iraq they couldn't even get pencils into the country because under the umbrella of sanctions we can't give iraq anything that they can't build can't, they can't build any weapons of mass destruction the lead inside pencils was sanctioned so they couldn't even get pencils into iraq right medicine into iraq okay you had madeline albright being asked right if madeline albright you united states being asked that if she thought thank you very much for the follow biggie uh, if she thought because during those times the sanctions in 1990s 
half a million Iraqi children died because they couldn't get medical attention. And they asked Madeleine Albright on 60 Minutes of All Places if she thought the price was worth it. And she said, yeah, we thought the price, we think the price is worth it. That half a million children in Iraq should die because they can't get any medicine because of the sanctions and the constant bombings. You got it? Compare that to what's going on in Ukraine. Just keep that in mind. Now, Bush Jr., Cheney regime, they decide to go into Iraq, build another coalition of the well, the coalition of the willing is 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 in Iraq War II, right? Put the military base in Saudi Arabia again, coming in there, going into Iraq hardcore, occupy Iraq, put their whatever puppets and power dismantled the military some of the worst wolf of which was one of the people that did this to one of the worst decisions military operations in human history the way it was conducted in iraq basically it gave all of southern iraq to iran because iran has really influence in iraq so what the united states did there made iran even that much more powerful all right United States didn't pull overnight out of Iraq because they're still there. So you, United States is still there. War waging under Bush Cheney regime for the early to for the early to mid to late two thousands, right? And then Obama comes into play, right? So this is what we got so far: two thousand and one Afghanistan, two thousand and three Iraq, right? You have pressure being put on Syria now. Lebanon is being pressured, right? And then you have so so called the uh, peace presidents coming in, peace president coming in. Obama, you got a peace Pulitzer Prize, whatever the hell it's called, right? The clown show, the clown piece of paper they hand these people. Obama, Obama comes into power. People think the the anti war movement goes away, right? In 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 Canada, the United States, they go away. Why did they go away? I think because a lot of the anti-war movement were racist because they thought a black person coming into power in the United States was going to be peaceful, right? Obama comes in, wages war on Syria. Watch this. Escalates in Afghanistan. Escalation. Boom. More military, more hardware, more soldiers in Afghanistan. Escalates in Iraq starts a war in syria starts a war in yemen bombs the living daylights out of syria and continues military oper operations in somalia supports the coup in ukraine this is obama people think bush and cheney were bad obama was 10 times worth bush and cheney afghanistan and iraq obama Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen, Somalia, Libya, Ukraine. Got it? Got it? Okay. Throughout all this time, NATO was moving east. Throughout all this time, Putin is in power. Okay. One of the main catalysts that made Russia realize what was going on is what happened in Libya. In the UN, the Western countries wanted to put a no-fly zone over Libya. And USSR was resisting as best as they could, but they couldn't resist any more than that. And then the Russian representative of the UN, I believe, walked out of the UN meeting. The Western world put no-fly zone over Libya, and they took that right no-fly zone over Libya because protecting people from innocent civilians from taking viagra look into that shit it'll make you vomit the propaganda it's unbelievable right and they gave they took that as no fly zone as a green lit to annihilate libya and they annihilated libya now look into libya history of libya how much it had before the annihilation of libya obama and what it has now it'll make you want to vomit okay nato continues to move east Russia under Putin is waging war on the oligarchs 
oligarchs start leaving, he arrests some of them, seizes their assets. Oligarchs, the people who made their money from selling Russia's history, Russia's resources, Russia's people to the Western world. That's how a lot of these oligarchs made their money in the 1990s. Russia eliminates the oligarchs that made their wealth billions on the backs of the Russian people. Right? Putin continues to build stronger military, stronger financial system, consolidates more power, eliminates the oligarchs, okay? Starts making allegiances around the world, okay? Starts knowing that resources are really the backbone of an economy, starts building up the resources, starts giving people land to come farm in Russia, at the same time, you got South Africa collapsing, right? The end of apartheid happened in the 1990s, I believe, right? End of apartheid happens, right? South Africa is, as a, as a pill, reflect, well, it, it's in trouble, right? A lot of farmers, some farmers in South Africa are given land in Russia to go to Russia and farm for free. We give you land if you can come and farm. Russia solidifies Russia, makes it more powerful because it knows NATO is coming for it and there's no way they're going to go back to the 90s, right? Russia could not defend, do anything about what happened in Ukraine in the 2014 coup when NATO uh, got rid of a democratically elected government okay, and installed historically Russia's enemy in there right and we talked about what took place there where they said they tried to commit genocide and Russian speaking Ukrainians it was a civil war that turned into a hot war Russia all this time built connections with China built connections with India extremely important with South America with Brazil they came up with BRICS economically we're right now okay in 2020 22 we saw that the russian currency is now considered in large part to be a reserve currency because you can buy russian resources by using rubles instead of us dollars okay under trump no additional wars quiet quiet under trump right really there's sanctions right there's sanctions trump does some stupid shit giving away Golan Heights to Israel, it's not there. Giving away parts of here, oh yeah, Morocco, Morocco is, uh, is a civil war as well, right? In Morocco and different places, what happens when the Biden administration comes in? What happens when the Biden administration comes in? Uh, their looting of Ukraine continues because under Obama, they were looting Ukraine. The same way they did to Russia in the 1990s, okay? The Western governments, the Western powers, they were doing to Ukraine, but they were using Ukraine as a, as a laundering money center. Okay, Morocco, um, Morocco is a civil war here, with South Sahara. Uh, what's that country called anyway? What's that region called? Okay. And where we are right now is. This, if we're lucky, will remain this. And will not expand but i think it's going to expand okay that's uh, the quick history speedy gonzalez style without having to look things up and uh, uh and look up everything i said i might have my dates a little bit wrong i might have different coalitions <laughs> wrong coalition of the willing was iraq war two i believe not iraq war one uh but anyway it is what it is okay aside from that what else should we add on this map i haven't caught up with the chat what's up I asked, do you have some good remedies that help with okay 